Everybody is gonna press uh, continue because this is being recorded. We tried to explain to you all that um, we're gonna always uh, have translation services um, for you. So you can just hit that button if you're on a laptop and it says interpretation and it'll do everything for you, okay? Eh, buenas tardes, familias. Eh, gracias por asistir a nuestra orientación hoy esta tarde de Voice Prep. Si necesitan traducción, tenemos, lo tenemos disponible. Nada más denle al globo que está abajo de su pantalla que dice interpretación y cambie su lenguaje para de inglés a español y asegúrese que usted eh, mute el audio original. Eh, si no tiene, no está en su computadora, en su teléfono, dice la palabra más. Y cuando le da la palabra más, puede cambiar, de interpretación, puede cambiar el idioma de inglés a español. Y por favor, asegúrense que ustedes eh, muten su, el audio eh, original. Si necesitan traducción, por favor, déjenos saber en el chat. Eh, si están teniendo algún problema con cambiar su lenguaje de inglés a español, por favor, déjenos saber en el chat. Gracias. Gracias, gracias, gracias. Okay, uh, let's get this party started. So um, I am super excited about tonight. Why? Because if you look around, look to your left, look to your right, one of these uh, other parents might be in your child's class. And we're super excited because you're one of those parents that's super duper involved, never miss a deadline, and feel like your son is the next best thing since sliced bread. We agree, we agree. So I am Kalik Kirkland, better known as Dr. Kirkland, your proud principal of the Boys Prep. I don't have to introduce everybody here, but they're on our leadership team. Um, and they are gonna each have uh, talking points to be able to tell you who they are, what they do, and how they're gonna assist your child. Um, and you probably wouldn't recognize them anyway because they all have on mask. Um, so without further ado, next slide. So what we're gonna do is we have a virtual tour for you because under normal circumstances, we would be in the building, we'd be walking you around to the different classrooms, letting you see the amazing building that we have. Unfortunately, you know why we can't do that. But we have the next best thing, which is this virtual tour with a, uh, a good toy that we have, which is gonna show you all of the, uh, well, at least some of the building, the most important parts, okay? Mr. Garcia, do we have that? Thank you. 
Okay, families, so that was our uh, virtual tour. Um, it was dragging a little bit or lagging a little bit, but it's okay because you can go on our school website and be able to see it all. Uh, you can go on our Instagram page. I believe it's there as well. It's going to be on our Facebook page. So you can definitely download it, share it with all your friends, and brag to your family and friends about your child's, your baby's new school. Okay? So don't worry about that. You can be able to see it on multiple mediums. Okay? So let me just try to explain a little bit about um, what's going to be going on for next year. So we can imagine that all of you um, have become masters of um, COVID, Google Classrooms, um, because you've been dealing with it just like we've been dealing with it. And we recognize that it's been uh, very challenging for you. So we've been very excited about what we've been able to offer our scholars uh, this year with a combination of um, the hybrid scholars that come actually into the building, as well as remote scholars. But next year, what we're doing is we're looking forward to our scholars being back on campus five days a week. Back on campus five days a week. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, so we're expecting for that to happen um, this same time next year at the beginning of the school year. So we also plan to provide 100% remote alternative for families who either have a medical or family issue because if being on campus would be too dangerous for them. So that will also be available. There will be a form shared with you via email that you can be able to submit this uh, medical request to us if, you, if that fits your category. So if you're looking uh, for to still be uh, online, not a problem. Just make sure that when you get it via email that you fill out that form. But if you don't get that form, please make sure that you contact us back immediately. Of course, when we're still back into the building, we're going to be super safe. We're still going to have masks. We're going to have uh, social distancing. The CDC is now saying that they want us to uh, be three feet um, or more if uh, we're in the building. We have an amazing um, cleaning staff that will be cleaning um, on a regular basis as well as uh, COVID testing for our scholars uh, it, uh, almost on a weekly basis. So we do have that. We will be mandating vaccines for all of the adults that are in the building. So all of our staff will be fully vaccinated. Um, as I'm coming home today, the mayor is talking about uh, the vaccine that is available. As you know, we're not going to require that our scholars um, take the vaccine that was just announced on 1010 wins um, today. However, whatever the Department of Health requires, that's what we will re require. Speaking about requiring, uh, we feel very proud that all of our scholars had their own technology. We did that from the very onset. So the students in grades K through two will have a, a tablet and the students in grades three and above will have their own Chromebook. The teachers are still going to be using Google Classroom and different ed programs that uh, students will be using. You might have heard about many of them, like La Lilo is one of them uh, that's really big. Um, so your students will be using that. And our students now, I was in a first grade class all day yesterday, they're smarter than we are about navigating these sites. So that won't be a problem, especially because they'll have that on their own. Okay, next slide. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to restart the translation. No problem. All right. And it just so happens to be Mr. Garcia. That's your slide. Welcome, yeah. Mr. Garcia. Uh, so I'm Mr. Garcia. I'm the director of operations into my third year at Boys Prep. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the school, how to find us, um, and our school hours. Uh, so Boys Prep next year will be a fully grown K through eight school. Um, so K through four is what we consider elementary school, and five through eight is what we consider middle school. Uh, we're located on 192 East 151st Street, uh, directly off the Grand Concourse. Um, we're easily accessible off the two, four, or five train, um, or if you take the bus on the Grand Concourse, the one and two, uh, the 13 is right behind us on River, and the 19 bus uh, runs along 149th Street as well. 
Um, so our school hours for elementary school are 7.50 to 3 p.m. Again, that's 7.50 to 3 p.m. Um, and then our middle school, uh, their day is a little bit later. So they begin at 8.25 and they dismiss at 4.25 um, with the exception of Wednesdays. Uh, they will be dismissing at 2.15. Um, and the reason why everyone's not starting at once um, is because we have an, a certain number of exits um, and we have next year about 900 plus kids entering the school. Um, so we staggered the arrival. Additionally, um, next year, uh, we're excited to bring back after school in our building for first to eighth grade. Why not kindergarten? Um, so the kindergarten day is already uh, a long day and developmentally we wanna make sure um, that they're not staying longer. Um, if you have a sibling, let's say a kid in kindergarten and another one in sixth grade and you wanna enroll them in after school, um, we'll speak with you one off uh, to see how we can accommodate and support you there. Um, but our after school program is on site in the building. It's our staff members um, and they operate until 5.30 p.m. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Garcia. Um, next up, Mr. Schneider. Good evening, I'm Greg Schneider. I'm the academic director for grades two through four. This is Lexi, she's joining me. Not usually at school, don't worry. Um, all right, so what I wanna talk with you about is the boys prep and our partnership with families. Your scholars can't do it by themselves. We can't do it without you. We all need each other. Um, Dr. Kirkland likes to talk about the three thirds, the student, the school, and the family. Well, we make sure that this partnership is strong so that your scholars can have the best success possible during the school day. And these are four key areas and key categories that we really focus on um, that we really wanna be kind of in sync with the families on. One is attendance and punctuality. Um, we like to say that if the scholar is in the building every day on time, then he will certainly grow and learn everything he needs to learn to be successful and be ready for the upcoming school year, the next school, the next grade. So that's where we need your support to make sure that your scholar is here um, every day uh, on time and you're not picking them up early at 12 o'clock. We teach all the way down to the last minute. So we wanna make sure that that is respected and valued across the board. Community norms that we have. So uniform, we have a dress code. It's a, it's a really nice dress code. Um, I believe there's a slide that gets into the dress code right next from this, after this one. Um, but we wanna make sure that our students are representing boys prep every day with their uniform. Um, we have our core values as well. Um, and really respect covers pretty much all of our core values. Uh, we wanna make sure that everyone is respecting everyone. Um, and then safety, you send your scholars here. We kind of assume safety, right? Safety is the utmost importance. Safety is the number one thing. You drop your scholars off, you assume we will keep them safe and that's our number one job. And then we can uh, certainly focus on the, the teaching and the learning from there. Along with that safety and just our partnership is the healthy eating that we um, want to enforce and just maintain in our school. Red Rabbit, that is the name of our, um, that is our food partnership. Um, they serve us, we have breakfast with them and we have lunch with Red Rabbit. Um, they also supply us with snacks. If you've been at our school at all, you'll see that at the end of the day, we're passing out some um, snacks and kind of goodie bags to families as well. What we love about Red Rabbit is that number one, it tastes good, but also they really provide us with well-balanced meals. Um, so there's no need for you to you know, spend your money on breakfast and on lunch for your children to come to school with. Um, there get, we're eating this food too. It's, it's delicious food. And, you know, we want to make sure that if you do choose to send your um, scholar to school um, with food from home, that it is healthy food. We want it to be, it needs to be 100% fruit juice or milk or water. Um, we're not looking for them to come to school with like a two liter of, you know, Coca-Cola. Um, and then the last piece is communication. There is a variety of ways that we will be communicating with families um, throughout the year. We have weekly newsletters, um, automated text messages for critical information that comes from um, any member of this SLT or even from teachers as well. They'll be communicating via text. And it's not here. We also have, um, we'll often have what's called a chat and chew 
where Dr. Kirkland and members of the SLT, which is the school leadership team, um, will be connecting with families um, on a regular basis and kind of covering any upcoming um, events or maybe if testing is next month, things like that, um, to support families as best as possible. Right, Lexi? And I'll pass the mic there. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. Uh, parents, one of the most, go back to Mr. Garcia real quick. One of the most important things that Mr. Snyder talked about was the uh, healthy eating, because all the other stuff we'll talk about later. You want to get your kids into the habit now over the summer, training them. You know what you want to train them to believe? That McDonald's is a bad thing. McDonald's is a bad thing. McDonald's is a bad thing. Say that to them three times a day before. Why? Because if you haven't ever been to our building, McDonald's is right in front of our school. So you do not want to have your child every day crying, talking about, mommy, give me some pancakes. Mommy, I need a, a, a Big Mac. No, no. They have excellent food inside the building, and you're going to be eating that food. Okay, good. Next slide. And just to add to that, if you want to try it out, uh, over the summer, uh, Red Rabbit will be distributing meals from our campus. Um, so you're more than welcome to stop by and pick up meals and uh, get your students accustomed to, to eating the meals as well. Thank you. Next slide. Ms. Kaminsky. Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Ms. Kaminsky. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Support for the elementary school. So currently grades K to three and next year I'll be moving up with grades K to four to support our entire elementary school. Along with our uh, fostering family partnerships, we have all kinds of special events here at The Boys Prep that we need your help in order to make sure our boys are successful. Right? We have book character day where they get to dress up like their favorite book character and they have to have a book to go with it to say here, see, it's a character from a book. Uh, we have celebrating success in the winter. We like to make sure that all of our boys are able to have an enjoyable winter break and be able to celebrate their success from the first half of the year with some little prizes based on attendance and achievement and growth. So you'll hear a lot about that um, in November and December. We also have our Pi Day contest, which is amazing. We have contests in grade bands to see who can memorize the most digits of Pi because Pi is an infinite number. And I think our current high, high count is over 200, um, maybe 225. I'm not really quite sure the exact count, but Oh, 257. I knew it was over 200. So we have some excellent mathematicians who are celebrating Pi Day on March 14th, 3.14. We also have our Martin Luther King speech contest, again, by grade bands. So they can pick any speech, any quote. You can dress them up, right? They can wear their little mustache or a hat. And be just like Dr. Martin Luther King and try to inspire their classmates and their peers. We have a spring musical. The first year that we did that, we did The Lion King. The second year we had Aladdin, right? And this coming year or next year, I'm not really quite sure when exactly, but we are doing The Wiz and I am psyched for that. It's going to be amazing because our boys are just so talented in so many different areas and we want to make sure we promote their whole development. And then along with that, we also have our spelling bee every year, again, by grade band. So they have to study all these words and know how to spell them without going back, without repeating. And finally, last but not least, we will be having our first eighth grade graduating class this year. And I am, to quote Dr. Kirkland, I am hype about this because this is my sixth year with these boys. So I've seen many of these boys come up through and just grow spectacularly every year. Thank you, Amanda. I think that we're all hype about that. Uh, with our first graduating class, and we're not going to um, spare uh, a dime um, in order to make it super special for the boys. Uh, next slide. Uh, Ms. Peguero. Ms. Hello. Peguero. Yes. How Good evening. Um, hi, I'm Norris Peguero. I'm the Student and Family Affairs Manager at Boys Prep. 
I am going to be speaking about our lovely uniforms. Um, so our uniforms, we have them because we want to unite as a community. We want to increase our academic um, focus and decrease the competition of clothing. So Flynn O'Hara is our official provider and you can order either online um, if you prefer, which is a great uh, and there are great resources to support you with sizing and all of the shipping options. If you prefer to get it in person, you can also um, go in person and there's a store address at the top right there, um, which is located in the Bronx. Flynn O'Hara makes it very easy for you to, to order. Um, you pretty much just tell them um, either online or when you visit in the school or in the store what grade your child is in and they'll tell you exactly what uniform um, you need and to purchase for them. But to go over very quickly, our kindergarten through second grade students wear a gray polo like our young man at the top left corner. Um, when it gets cold, we want our students to wear their navy, uh, navy blue sweatshirts, fleece or sweater, um, preferably plain or with the boys prep logo. Um, kindergarten through second grade wears navy blue slacks and all black or all navy blue sneakers or shoes. Third through fourth grade, um, everything else is the same except for their polo. They're wearing the light blue polo like the boys in the top right corner. Um, again, navy blue sweaters when it comes to be cold, navy blue slacks and solid black or navy blue shoes. And in the middle school, boys have the purple polo um, that they wear throughout the week. And on Fridays, they wear their uh, blue button-up Oxford shirt, which is the bottom right corner uh, photo. Um, and then everything else is the same. Along with the, the, the blue Oxford shirt on Fridays, they wear a bow tie, a navy blue bow tie. And then their pants have to be khaki. Um, Yep, and then if there's any other questions, of course, you can uh, message me. I'll put my email in the chat. And I believe that's it for uniforms. One more critical uniform piece, uh, given the times that we're in. Um, well, let's treat it like a uniform piece uh, is a mask. Uh, so depending on how you've been learning right now, if you've currently been going to a school or remote, especially if you've been remote, um, starting to get uh, your students in the habit of wearing a mask, at least as of right now. Guidelines can change over the summer, uh, but as of right now, students are required to wear masks in the building. Okay, um, Mr. Garcia, um, you know me, little pompous. Can you put the spotlight on me real quick, Mr. Garcia? Can you put the spotlight on me real quick, Mr. Garcia? Is the spotlight on me? Okay, good. I'm here. Parents, uniforms, uniforms, uniforms. We are a uniform school. You knew that before we applied, before you applied. You knew that, right? Okay, good. So this is not a shock that we're telling you about uniforms, but we always get that one parent, none of you that's on the call, not you, but the other parent. So I just need you to be that voice. We are a uniform school. Do me a favor, look up Flynn O'Hara now. Do not wait until August. Because then what you're going to tell me is, oh, they're on back order. Dr. Kirkland, they're on back order. They're not on back order now. So you can always buy two or three sizes ahead right now so that your child is ready. That's number one. Number two, black, black. If I was speaking Spanish, it would be negro, negro. Black footwear, all black footwear. Do not spend $200 on shoes for boys prep. You can go right to, uh, what's that place that's right near the mall? Um, uh, uh, Sketchers. Sketchers, Burlington. Sketchers, Sketchers. You can buy $20 black shoes, black real comfortable footwear for your child. And what I always suggest is, because they're so cheap, you can buy, a, let's say if your child is wearing a size six now, a size six, a size seven and a size eight because your child's gonna grow their footwear. So if you have to ask me, oh, well, what if they got a little white in it? No. What if they got a little orange in it? No, it's all black footwear. Everybody got that? Good. Uh, take me off the spotlight. Take me off the spotlight. Good, that's over with. Next slide.
Good. Next up, back, he's back again. Mrs. Snyder with Lexi. Mrs. Snyder with Lexi. Right, Lexi's getting a little chatty. Let's see how I do. All right, I want to take you a, a little bit through a typical elementary school um, day, day in the life of an elementary school scholar at Boys Prep. It's a little different depending on kindergarten all the way up through fourth grade, but these are components that you should see in all elementary school classrooms. So number one, school always starts off with our morning meeting. Now, back up a little bit, when they enter the building, during arrival, we'll supply them with that red rabbit breakfast we talked about. They'll have that breakfast time if they come a little bit early. But once our school day starts, we jump right into morning meeting. And the ruler curriculum, curriculum you can look that up online, but really that's our social emotional learning opportunity. So it's a chance for teachers to connect with students, for students to basically address how they're feeling that morning, how they're entering um, the building. and. It's not so we fix everyone's feelings and, you know, make everyone feel better, but it's let's acknowledge where we're at so that we can then make choices and decisions for ourselves so that we can not let that affect our day um, in a negative way as best as possible and get the support we need as necessary. Um, after morning meeting, we get into more acad our academic curriculum. It could be humanities. It could be math. It could be mixed up. There's a lot of discretion um, per class. Okay, so there will be at least 120 minutes or so of humanities. What that looks like is our unit of study. Um, then each unit is a different theme. Um, and we're really, in, over the past couple years, we've really tried to be culturally responsive and covering social studies as well during our reading and writing units. Um, we also in, are sure to have guided reading and independent reading. Now what's amazing about guided reading and, and independent reading is no matter what grade level your scholar is in, um, we are gonna be hitting them at, the, at their reading level. Or actually for guided reading, it'll be just above their actual reading level where they're getting that guided reading instruction. So if your kids, if your scholar is reading on a fourth grade level in kindergarten, your teachers are gonna be hitting them with guided reading during that time at the fourth grade level. Now, also we'll have close reading, which this is, a, here's the difference between close reading and guided reading. Close reading will be grade level content. So no matter where your scholar is, they will be exposed to grade level content and really a focus on reading comprehension um, during that time. Fast forward to math, we'll have at least 90 minutes of math. Um, our math content, our, our curriculum, our core curriculum is the investigations curriculum. Um, in, an, in a COVID-free world, um, this is an amazing program where students, it's very hands-on and they get to use manipulatives and things like that. Um, so uh, teachers have done wonderful things in the remote world with this curriculum in spite of that. However, we love this curriculum because we know that students need to actually, you know, touch manipulatives and to help them to learn with measurement and whatnot. Um, we also have a block with story problems um, where they, it's kind of self-explanatory. Students really learn strategies that are specific to solving any story problem they might come across. And then number strings is a third component where students are really getting the connection between, they give you, if you know these math facts, how they can help you to do more challenging um, math problems as well. Um, mixed into our school day, students will have science um, and they will have a special as well. Um, and specials are, we have, that's PE, that's music and art. So we make sure that students get one of those um, every day during the school day. And that basically takes, that's uh, a typical elementary school day for uh, boys prep. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you, Lexi. So um, very quickly, parents, uh, we've been doing it in the chat. Hopefully you've been able to pay attention to both. Please do not forget to fill out the attendance form. Uh, the attendance form is a little link. You can be able to do your attendance there. And if you have uh, a child at a girl's school, um, this will not count for both meetings. Okay, so this is only counting for the boys prep meeting. Okay, uh, without further ado, uh, Ms. Garcia and uh, Ms. Melendez. Take it away. They are probably, they Ms. both- Ms. Garcia, do you want me to start? 
There we go. It wasn't allowing me to unmute myself. Good go. evening, everybody. My name is Alyssa Garcia. I'm the Director of Humanities for the middle school. Um, and when we are looking at our middle school academics, um, we are looking at instruction across the board in all of our main contact, content areas. Um, every day, there's at least 90 minutes of instruction in ELA and math and at least 45 minutes of science, history, and specials every single day. Um, any extracurricular work, such as homeworks, projects, um, any academic activities that are taking place outside of um, the regular class time is definitely meant to enrich those experiences that the students are getting during class time. Um, and it's something that we constantly are working toward, but making sure that our boys who graduate our first graduating class next year, um, that students who graduate from Boys Prep will definitely be well prepared for their high school experience, making sure that they have the skills and strategies needed for success in high school of their choosing and well beyond that. When we're looking specifically at our humanities, which is encompassing our ELA and history curriculum, um, some of those highlights include daily practice, in close reading, which similar to what Mr. Schneider shared, um, close reading instruction is including grade level of material where students practice the skills and strategies needed to be able to access any text that they would read across any discipline across their day. So it's a broad range of both fiction and nonfiction texts that students have access to then, and they practice on a regular basis ways to be able to um, reach the highest level of meaning, um, the main idea, and then being able to apply that thinking to both written questions where they will write out their answers as well as student to student discourse during the class time. There's also exploration of content through thematic based units of study where students will be reading various texts um, such as novels, or nonfiction text, and they is more of a traditional type English class type experience when we're in the unit of study. There's daily practice across all of our content areas in the areas of writing, speaking, and listening. And we are definitely moving more and more toward culturally relevant and responsive um, materials for our students so we can make sure that the materials that they are accessing during the school day is reflective of them, who they are as a person and the world around them. Hi everyone, my name is Victoria Melendez and I'm the academic director um, in charge of STEM in the middle school. Um, and, in, and STEM, in case you don't know, is um, just our math and science classes. Um, and some just some highlights that I wanted to um, speak about. Um, we're gonna start with math. Um, similar to what they do in elementary school where their investigations um, curriculum is very inquiry based, um, very similar in the middle school. Fifth grade engages in the curriculum called um, AF um, Achievement First Math. Um, and then grades six through eight um, engage in the curriculum called Open Up. Um, it's very inquiry, inquiry based. It's, um, and that basically just means that the onus is put on the students to kind of like take charge of their own learning with some with some teacher guidance. Um, it's a lot of hands-on work where they um, get to really understand and learn the content that they're um, engaging with. Um, what else for math? Math, they do a lot of partner work, a lot of um, group work, um, and that um, kind of like helps them kind of collaborate with each other so that they're understanding the material and kind of learning from each other again, with just teacher um, pretty much um, plays the part of facilitator and students kind of take charge of their own learning. Um, very similar in science where um, the curriculum is um, the FOSS curriculum. Um, they engage in the next generation standards. Um, they do a lot of projects. They do men of color scientists and inventor projects. They do video game creations. They engage with something called gizmos, where it's like um, hands-on virtual projects that they get to do on the computer. They do some engineering designs. Um, Pre-COVID, uh, um, the boys prep had like this amazing science fair. It was, um, it was like a, a full day um, where um, all the kids were able to kind of display their science projects in our, in our um, was, I think it was our atrium. And all the students had an opportunity to kind of engage and, 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 and see what the projects were about. This year, hoping to do something similar, but it's going to be virtual and um, 
really hoping the next year we get to do something that's um, back in the building where everybody can have fun with it again um, and do it um, the, the way that V does it because no one does it the way we do. Thank you, um, Vicky, Vicky Melendez. Um, now we're going to have uh, Deja Glover. Deja Glover, how are you? Hi, everybody. I I'm doing well. Um, hi, my name is Deja Glover. Uh, I'm the Assistant Director of Student Support for the middle school. So I'll be working with, well, this year I'm working with four through seven, but as we scale up, I'll be working with fifth through eighth <laughs> next year. Uh, so super excited for you all to be coming into our community. Um, so this slide is for families that have students with IEPs. So in preparation for the next school year, once we as a school have access to your student's IEP, you should expect a call from us, uh, which usually is around July, just so we can go over the services and make sure um, that your student is prepared to come into the building and just give you a review of you know, what that will look like. Um, in reference to a question I was asked in the chat, we do offer um, ICT, which is integrated co-teaching um, in the middle school. Um, and in most classes in the elementary school. Um, Ms. Kaminsky, who you heard from earlier, she covers the elementary school. So if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to her. Um, uh, as reference to regular communication, you'll hear from your students, teachers um, and service providers, if they have any, um, regarding their progress and their IEP goals. And then, um, you know, when your student's annual meeting comes up, you'll hear from the school team, which includes myself or Amanda Kaminsky, who I said is for uh, elementary, uh, the student's teachers and any service providers, um, if they have any, as well as the CSE. Um, and uh, for any families who, you know, next year, you're concerned with your student's progress in academics or um, social emotional development, um, and you, you know, are concerned in that area, you can always reach out to myself or Ms. Kaminsky um to ask for an evaluation or to see how to move forward with supporting your student um but if anything you can feel free to reach out to me or Ms. kaminsky and i will drop my uh email in the chat and oh and to reference uh this adonis prado um if you what uh well put in the chat what you mean by reassessment um and i can answer your question but yes, thank you all for being here. Looking forward to it. Uh, thank you, Ms. Glover. Um, next and final slide. Just one piece on the IEP. If your student has a uh, busing as part of the IEP, uh, we do offer that as well. We don't offer general education busing, uh, but if your student has busing as part of the IEP, um, it's something that we do offer as a school as well. So a uh, few things. Uh, number one, um, Mr. Uh, well, let's do this. We, we we're going to have a great relationship with all of our families, right? But there's a few things of homework that you're going to have to do. Number one, right around now, you should be getting ready to receive a phone call um, from Boys Prep around the home language survey. Mr. Garcia, have those phone calls already started yet? Uh, no, within the next week within the next week. So when you see this arbitrary number and it comes up boys prep, please make sure that you get that, um, that call in. It's gonna be very important with the home language survey because if, you, uh, if your child is gonna need ESL services, very, very, very important. That's number one. Number two, uniforms. So I see that I got um, somebody um, uh, making fun of Dr. Kirkland already. Yeah, now the Kirkland is a little bit of a sicko when it comes to uniforms. Okay, but only reason why, because I don't want the parent to go out spending a whole lot of money on beautiful green uh, sneakers, and that's not the uniform. And then what happens is you'll tell me, oh, well, I've already spent $200 on these shoes already. Oh, he's wearing these. No, he has to have the black footwear. Next thing, summer program. So we have a workshop that's happening tonight, a workshop happening tonight. And guess what? You are already part of the Boys Prep family. So did we already drop that um, uh, link for them, um, Ms. Uh, Peguero? I just did. Good. So Ms. Peguero just dropped a link so that you could be able to join our summer program workshop that's happening tonight at 7 p.m. Is it 7 p.m., Ms. Peguero? Yes, correct. 7 p.m. So you got time to be able to cook you a quick meal and join the call. 
Because why do we think that the summer pr programs are going to be so important? It's just our way of showing you different resources that are going to be available for your child for the summer. Next up, on May 18th, there's going to be a town hall that's going to be at 5 o'clock. That's going to be for our entire network, for you to even get more information uh, uh, about what it is that is happening in our entire network. On June 2nd, Mr. Snyder told you about these chat and shoes that we have. Basically, it used to be when we were in the building, you'd be able to ask questions and we would be able to uh, give you food. Now we got a little bit cheaper because now it's all remote. So now it's just called the chat and chew. So please make sure that you like look on your calendars for June 2nd, that's gonna be at noon. We're gonna give you the information in that regard. Um, Mr. Um, Garcia already talked to you about the summer meals. So those are gonna happen in July. We're not only going to be able to have meals on a regular basis, but you're going to be able to pick up your child's independent reading books based on your child's um, grade. So those summer reading books are going to be distributed sometime in July, and we make sure, we're going to make sure that we have that information for you. Helium is the name of our after-school program. So there's going to be a whole lot more information with regards to you signing up in that regard for the after-school program that happens Monday through Friday all the way up until, I want to say, 5, 5.30, okay? So that's going to be Monday through Friday is the Helium after-school program. You're going to make sure that you join our uh, Facebook group. There's going to be a question that you have to ask, answer, about what is your child's teacher's name. You're just going to write Dr. Kirkland. So you're going to answer, like, it's like three or four questions just to make sure that we have the right people and we're giving you the code name. If you have, they're going to ask you, what is your child's um, teacher? You're just going to, for now, say Dr. Kirkland. And for all of y'all that got a whole, like a million followers on the gram, we also have a Instagram, at publicprepnyc, at publicprep.nyc, or not dot, just at publicprepnyc. That's the Instagram uh, page. Okay, real quick, Mr. Um, Garcia, one last time, can I get a spotlight? One last time, can I get a spotlight? Am I on spotlight, Mr. Garcia? There I go. There I go. There I go. True story. True story. My wife and I are uh, happily married. We are now in the process of purchasing a home, a new home. What do I do? I now have been a stalker. I go to see the home at 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock at night, I want to see you on Saturday mornings. I want to see if anybody is doing construction at, uh, at uh, uh, 5 o'clock in the morning. I want to go on Sundays to see whether or not um, is there parking on the block. That's what I'm doing because I'm about to buy a house that I plan on being at for the next few years. You're about to do something even more important than a house. You're about to uh, have your most prized possession, your son, in a school that he might be there from kindergarten all the way to grade eight. Here's what I challenge you to do, parents. I challenge you to come up to our school at around 7.30, between 7.30 and 7.45 in the morning and look at our arrival. I challenge you to come to our school at around 2.50, between 2.50 and 3.05 to see our dismissal. But not just to see the dismissal, but if I'm you, I act like a stalker. Just say, hey, parent, you're going to see the parents on the line. Hey, parents, can you tell me a little something about this school? Because my child's going to be coming here next year. Hey, parent, you didn't start looking at the shoes that the kids have on. Start looking at the uniform that the kids have on. And then say, hey, is that principal, the one with the bow ties? Is he, a, is he as crazy as I thought he was? Yeah, they'll tell you, yep, yep. But that's what you need to do. Don't listen to me. We could have created this fake school. We could be lying to you, right? We could be lying to you. Go do the research yourself and ask the parents that when you come into the school and ask them, hey, how is it? What, child is, what grade is your child in? Can you point to me a third grader? Can you point to me a fourth grade parent? Can you point to me a kindergarten parent? And ask them. Don't believe us. Ask the parents. Speaking about asking the parents, 
now is our time to answer any of your questions. We think that we've done a good job of